We're back. It's us. Mike. Bridget. <laughs> Soft magnetics. Hard topics. So today, what we're going to be talking about is stacking ferrite. We get a questions a lot about stacking cores on top of each other. So Mike, can you explain why people do that and the benefits? People do that because they don't have a big enough normal core usually. Okay. And <laughs> they... <laughs> There, there are some benefits to doing okay. it. Why you would instead of... Let the people know. All right, we'll let the people know. Um, so if you took two, two toroids, for example, um, you could just make you know that as one solid core, and it would perform largely the same. The main difference comes when you're working at really, really high frequencies. If you make a call it a compound core made of multiple smaller cores. So you treat this like it was one piece and wind around, you know, the whole, both of them at the same time. The advantage that could have versus just a singular large core is in dimensional resonance. So you're going to not have the same propensity to create standing waves at certain frequencies with two smaller cores than you would one larger one. But practically speaking, why a lot of people do this is because this core of double thick doesn't exist. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there are actual advantages, um, but a lot of times you would do this just because that particular geometry doesn't exist. Okay, so that's a lot of times for suppression stuff, but you could also do it with inductive stuff, right? Yeah. Some rods, stacking rods. Stacking rods. So you could do the <laughs> you could do this with <laughs> rods. Um, so for this, you could use it, in the case of suppression, you could use it as a inductor, transformer, or something like that. You could even do um, side by side to make a compound ballon core or multi aperture core. But rods are a little bit different. So rod cores, you're doing kind of the same thing, right? We don't have a rod core this particular size, so you make it up out of two smaller rod cores. Rod cores, there's less of a reason because of the direction of the magnetic path length in these. There's less of a reason to make this of multiples aside from dimensionally. But the nice thing is with a rod core, not in every scenario, but in a lot of scenarios in a rod core, this air gap that you're creating between the halves isn't actually going to degrade the performance too, too much. So you stack them together end to end like this and wind around the whole outer diameter of them. Because you're winding you know, the magnetic path length on a rod, you're essentially going to be going through the center of the core. The magnetic field's going to be emanating out of either end and back into the other. Most of your magnetic path length of a solenoidal wound rod core is going to be air anyway. So having this tiny little crack between the core halves isn't going to make a humongous difference. Uh, whereas if you had a break in a toroid made out of like multiple little arc segments, that would be very significant having those gaps inside of that. Um, yeah, I mean, rods are kind of a, you know, not a particularly difficult thing to make, but there's limitations to how long you can make them. So, you know, we can only press a rod so many inches tall before it can't fit on refractory or the press isn't large enough to be able to make something that big. You can do other method, like methods of forming this, like uh, extruding. Um, if you're to extrude a rod, you can theoretically make any length rod that you want to, but dimensionally they're not as nice when they're made. Um, the rod winds up being not always super cylindrical and can be kind of banana shaped as it Mm. Starts going through the kiln and warping and everything. So smaller rods are a little bit easier to make in that way. And so for winding these, it keeps it together or you glue it or? Uh, you can glue it. So cyanoacrylate sticks really well to ferrite. 
So that's a good way to glue them together. I mean, it's ceramic and uh, super glue has forever been a great way of putting together coffee mugs mm -hmm. that you drop while you're doing the dishes. So it works pretty good on ferrite too. Uh, you can glue them together. You could have a, I mean, you can put tape around them mm -hmm. together. You can rely on the winding to hold them together. In the case of these being really massive, chunky rods, um, you need pretty thick wire to actually hold these yeah. together with. Uh, sometimes it'll be a coil or a bobbin that'll go around the outside, a plastic bobbin that'll get wound, and that'll actually give the assembly some structure to it. So since we can make these like these, mm -hmm. can you make rods side by sides backing them? You could. So you could do that. You're going to be doubling your cross-sectional area of your rod when you do that. The only downside, and it depends how many rods it's made up of, right? So if you can envision a winding around there, you wind up with an air gap mm. kind of top and bottom where you don't have rod material. That's going to reduce coupling somewhat into from the winding into the ferrite core. And it's not going to be as good as if you had a solid slug shape like that. Now, if you made this out of, let's say, like a hundred rods that were much thinner than this to get to the same equivalent diameter, you can get something that's a lot more cylindrical shaped. So it's probably less of a disadvantage mm. electrically to that as opposed to this. Um, but it would also be kind of horrible to put together. Yeah. <laughs> um, like an art project. Yeah. <laughs> You, you could do that, though, um, and you could do a combination of that and stacking them end to end to fill a larger larger shape. That's uh, certainly a thing that you could do. The assembly gets more difficult, but um, you could probably make something pretty functional like that. So what are the top questions people ask about stacking? Um, you know, putting them end to end versus just a single solid rod. That's a pretty common one. Probably one of the most common ones that I've seen is taking toroids like this to make a like a transformer or ballon or something along those lines. So there's a, a type of core we sell that's a called a multi-aperture core. That's our uh, lingo for it. It's sometimes called a binocular core or a ballon core. Uh, there's different names that people call them, but basically it's a you know, an oval shaped core with two apertures in there. And what it is in essence is this, um, a ballon core. If you look at it, the center post or bridge between the apertures will almost always be twice the thickness of the outer walls because it is essentially two toroids next to each other. If you were to make a binocular ballon core this same size but this was all filled in in one solid piece the performance of it would be very similar to this mm. it would probably have a little bit higher inductance just by way of having just a little bit more material in the center and kind of bridge areas but when you're trying to make a larger transformer or something along those lines and you know the size of multi-aperture core doesn't exist you could take toroids and put them next to each other wind around kind of the centers where they're close and actually could stack that up to make a, a even longer core and that's actually pretty common when you look at rf amplifiers and um, i guess other higher power amps like that that would have transformers of this like in there uh, you'll see a lot of them are made up like that. Hmm. I don't know if it's totally because that core doesn't exist or they are leveraging the fact that they're using multiple smaller cores to get around some of the dimensional resonance because it does tend to be used on higher frequency designs uh, or if it's just accidentally it's working out nicely that way. But hmm. that's probably one of the more common questions. Hey, could you use two toroids in place of a a multi-aperture core, and usually the answer is yes. Oh, we love that. All right, well, that's on Stacking Ferrite. If you have any other questions, feel free to comment. Thanks. Bye. Bye.